Hello everyone. Welcome to the Salesforce CPQ video series. Today we will be looking at price rules and lookup queries. My name is Prashant Ambition. I have over 17 years of work experience, predominantly in the salesforce.com space. I hold 15 salesforce.com certifications, including application architect and CPQ specialist. I'm a trailblazer mentor and my Twitter and LinkedIn details are given here. In today's session, we will give an introduction to a very important and powerful tool within Salesforce CPQ known as price rules. We will go through the org in creating an actual price rule and see how they work with different examples. We will go through some of the key advantages price rules offer. And finally, we look at a very interesting feature which you can use on price rules called lookup queries. Price rules in Salesforce CPQ are used to update pricing on code lines using complex logic or lookup tables. There are automations which you can build based on certain criteria to update the price on the code lines. Now, technically, the price rules are not just for prices. The rules themselves form a structure wherein you can update any field on code lines. And the way a price rule is set up is you will define the price rule and with it, you will associate price conditions and price actions. So the way this works is when the price conditions are met, the price actions would take in effect. There's also another object tied to price rules called lookup queries. We will look at uh, during the later part of this presentation. Now let us quickly go to our org and actually see a price rule in action. So now we are in our org, let us go through a typical example of a simple price rule. To go to uh, creating price rules, you'll go to the price rules tab available by default with the Salesforce CPQ package. As you will see, I've already created some examples and we'll go through the, the simple example to start off with and then go through some of the more uh, detailed examples which have, uh, which really use the power of uh, price rules to a greater extent. So whenever you're creating, you will click on new to create the header to start off with and where you see uh, a few fields to be populated. And there is, of course, the price rule name, which you want to give a descriptive name. So it's easy to understand whenever you're using the price rule, a checkbox to indicate whether this is active or not. There's a field for evaluation scope. Now, this has two values, configurator and calculator. And what this defines is what is the evaluation scope for the price rule, meaning whether you want this price rule to run when you're working on the configuration screen while configuring a bundle or when you're on the code line editor, when you're actually doing the calculations. Now, if you think about Salesforce CPQ functionality, the configurator primarily has to do with selecting the products and quantities, whereas the code line editor is where you primarily do all your pricing. So in most use cases, you would actually be using the calculator and not the configurator, but you do have both options available. Next is you have a selection of which conditions are met. Now, as I was mentioning on a price rule, you would be adding uh, one or more conditions and you can have a simple selection where any, uh, all or custom uh, for the conditions met. So if you select all, it means it has to evaluate that all the criteria are met. Any means uh, any one of them. And custom is where you can actually define a custom logic based on the, the naming of the conventions. You can actually put in an advanced condition using the typical and or and so on functionality. So you just build in the formula and write it down here if you have an advanced or custom condition. There is a very important field called calculator evaluation event. And uh, this has a few options here. In this particular video, we will not be covering this. It will be covered in the code calculation sequence. So uh, when you're studying price rules and you want to understand it in a little more detail, uh, look at the price rule video as well as the CPQ code calculation sequence video uh, in conjunction to help understand how this works. Because to understand this, you also need to understand how the coding uh, calculation happens in the back end. So when we explain that, we will also come back to revisit how, uh, how it works on price rules. So for the purposes of this video, we will skip this, uh, uh, this particular field. 
Um, there are a few other fields also available. Um, configuration event is based on save or edit. So whether you want the price rule to run when a save happens or is it at the time of an edit. So of course, edit is more real time, but does take up uh, some performance considerations. So unless you really need uh, to see the calculations show up in real time, save is the typical option you go with. You can also tie the, a product uh, directly by populating the field here. Uh, and then uh, also you have an evaluation order, which you will see in, in many of the Salesforce CPQ objects to define when there are multiple price rules, which sequence they should be evaluated in. Uh, there's a lookup object field also, which we'll come back to when we're looking at lookup queries. So that's how the, the header structure of a price rule is, is filled. And I'll go directly to an example, which is already created here. So this is a simple price rule example set to active. Uh, it's going to run on the calculator. So it is going to run on the code line editor and uh, it looks at all the conditions being met. And uh, that's pretty much it. We've kept the other fields uh, as their default values. I've put an evaluation order of 10 and uh, that sets up the header for the price rule. Next, we will go and add some price conditions. So as you can see here, I've already added a price condition and let me quickly pull that up to show you how a price condition looks like. So what you're trying to do here in the price condition on a price rule is to define the criteria for identifying when the price rule should fire. So the first thing to choose here is in on which object does that condition need to be evaluated. So here I've selected the quote line. You have options of quote, quote line, product option or summary variable. Um, when you're using the configurator example, uh, that's when typically uh, product options are selected. The quote and quote line are selected when you're uh, using the calculator because quote and quote line obviously are on the uh, quote line is primarily on the quote line editor, whereas the product option is on the configuration scheme. Uh, in this example, I've chosen the field of the quote line to be product code. Again, this is a, a drop down where you can add additional fields by adding the API names. Um, the index is uh, set to 20. Uh, I'm not using any uh, tested variable summary variables or uh, formulae. I do have those options as well. And I've set the operator to be equal to. I have additionally a um, bunch of other uh, standard comparative operators which are available here. Um, so once I set that up, the filter information is calculated is shown here. So I put a filter to be a value. So I can choose a value or a variable or a formula. So especially if I'm using form layer or filter variables, but in this case, I've chosen a value and I've set the value to be headphones. So if I just exit out of this and give you a, a quick snapshot. So what this condition simply does is it checks for code lines with a product code equal to the value of headphones. So that is a condition. And in this particular price rule, I've only kept one condition. So this, this price rule will fire whenever we add a, a code line with a product code of headphones. Now, after adding the price conditions, the next step is to add the price actions. So price conditions identify when the price rule to, should fire. Price actions will tell you what the price rule should do. And let's take a look at this example. I'll again go to the edit mode to show you some of the field values. Uh, in this case, you have to select a target object. So where does the action apply on? So this is on the quote line. I have uh, options like code, code line, product option, and I'm targeting the discount field. So what I'm doing is on the code lines discount field, I have a, a price action source where I put, I can put either a value or a formula or even lookup field or source field. In this case, I've, I've taken a very simple example where I'm setting the code line discount to 7.5%. So it's a very, uh, very simple, overall price rule where uh, whenever you're adding the headphones uh, quote line, you actually apply a discount automatically of 7.5%. Uh, so this really it does not even warrant the need for a price rule in a real life scenario, but it's a good example to show how a price rule will set up. Uh, let me quickly show you this in action as well before we go to the next step. So now I'm on a quote, I'm going to quickly add the product we looked at. So 
So like I mentioned, um, this particular price rule uh, runs on the headphones uh, product. So we have to make sure the criteria is met product code equal to headphones. I'm selecting that particular product and adding to the code. You'll see that the list price is $50. Now, as soon as I add it, you will see that an additional discount of 7.5% has been automatically added. This is your simple price rule working in action to automatically update pricing on a code line editor. So we just looked at a very simple example of how price rules can be used in Salesforce CPQ. Uh, of course, uh, we can use it to a little more complexity by using all the features that are available, but you would have already seen that it is giving you an advantage where it, it forms a great substitute for features like workflows and, and process builders because you are doing field updates natively using the tools which are available as part of CPQ. Also, one more thing is that when we are using price rules, we're using a feature which is inherently included in how Salesforce CPQ does a lot of its calculations. So especially when you're looking at pricing, there's a sequence of steps Salesforce CPQ follows to calculate the prices. And when we use workflows and process builders, the updates these features do on these records like quote lines could be in between that calculation sequence and actually give you results which are not expected. So whenever possible, leverage price rules because they are a great substitute as well as they, they fall inherently how Salesforce CPQ does its uh, price calculation. Uh, of course, uh, the additional advantage is uh, that you are not going to hit uh, your limits on process automation uh, features. Uh, you're not even using those functionalities if you use price rules. There's another place where you have seen in the price rule examples uh, is that we can use formally in the price rules to reference across objects. So some examples here are uh, when you're referencing a field on a quote, you can use the, the format here given. And similarly, you can even reference parent quote lines or fields on products. Um, and then using the referencing feature on, on formally, you can traverse across objects and uh, build in complicated logic which goes uh, across multiple objects and we'll look at a quick example on this in the org now so now we are back in our org and let us look at another example of a price rule we've created here so in this example we have set it to active the evaluation scope is again calculator and uh, we are looking at all the conditions being met in this case, we have set two price conditions and let's see what they are. The first one is checking on the quote object and checking the partner field. So again, this field was not initially available and I added this on the pick list to make it available for selection, making sure I'm using the API name. And the condition is the partner field on the quote should not be equal to, so I've, I've selected the not equals operator to a value of blank. So very simply, it's looking for quotes where the partner field is not blank. So wherever the partner field is populated, that's the first condition. Now going to the second condition, the second condition is the same as what we looked at in our uh, earlier simple example, where the quote line product code equals the value of headphones. So we want to look for quote lines where the product code is headphones. Do note that we have two conditions, one evaluating at the quote level and the other evaluating at the quote line. And as we have set up in the price rule header, we need to check that all the conditions are met. So that's the condition where this price rule will fire. Now let us look at the price actions related to this particular price rule to see what this price rule will do. The price action is targeted on the quote line. So it's, it'll be updating the quote line and the discount percentage field on the quote line. The way it updates it is not based on value here. It's based on a formula. So you can see that there's a, an if condition formula here, nested if, and the condition traverses from the quote to the partner and the type field. So it is checking the quote of that particular uh, quote line. It is going to see uh, if there's a partner field populated. It looks at that lookup value there and then traverses to the partner record and finds the value on the type field on the partner and checks if it is an installation partner. 
So if it's installation partner, it applies a discount of 5%. Similarly, uh, in the next if condition, it checks if it's a technology partner. And if that's the case, it applies a percentage of 10%. So as you can see, this formula is a little more complex than the initial direct value, which we had set uh, in the simple case. Here we are actually traversing from the code to a partner, which is actually an account record and checking the type field there. So that's how this price rule will work. Now let's look at this in action. So now let us go to the code and uh, first let's look at the partner field. So if I scroll down, you'll see that the partner field is blank. I'm going to update this with the uh, installation partner. I've created a dummy account record or partner record, which has the type set to installation partner. So let me quickly pull that up to show you. As you can see, the type is set to installation partner. So now we have this particular code set to meet the first if condition. So it should apply a 5% discount when I add the specific headphone product. So let's go ahead and update um, our code with the product. Select this. Now, as you can see, the list price is again 50, but you'll see that an additional discount of 5% has been automatically applied by checking which partner is associated at the quote level and the type of that partner. Now let's uh, repeat this exercise by changing the partner to a technology partner. So I'm going to cancel out of this. We'll go back to our quote record and uh, change the partner associated with this quote. And we'll now pick the technology partner example and save this record. And we go back and add the product again. Once you select this, you'll see it's been added again with $50 list price, but the discount here is now 10%. So this is a very simple and effective way of um, managing your discounts or price rules where you're looking at uh, criteria based on different attributes, not just at quote line or quote or even going further up at say account or partner account level and checking for fields there. So these formulae are, are very powerful. In fact, you can write formulae which even exceed our typical Salesforce formula field uh, character limits of 5,000 characters. So you can really build complex formulae to, to support your business logic and uh, really makes uh, the price rule functionality a very effective functionality while managing business needs. So now that we have looked at uh, scenarios which can be covered using formulae and variety of conditions, there are some use cases which are a little more complex. And that's where we need to use something called lookup queries along with price rules. So let me start by giving you a typical use case where that might be needed. So let's say we're adding an iPhone 12 product on our code. And this example may be familiar to you if you have looked at our attributes video. And you'll see that we have some attributes which we can select when we are configuring this bundle. So to start off with, we can select a carrier which can be AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, or Verizon. And then also when you're selecting some of the specific products like cellular service, you can add a token text, which has some values along with, uh, you can have an attribute related to the data you're selecting. So when you're configuring this in a typical use case would be for the cellular service, we may have a, a typical list price defined. But as you're thinking about this, you have all different variations of carriers and non token text and data which are applicable to the cellular service product. So all these different combinations of attributes can be chosen as part of the quoting process. And it's very likely possible that for different combinations, you want to charge a different price to the customer. So you want to quote something different. Of course, you can do this through individual price rules which check each and every criteria, or you could set up different products, but then that would be a very poor user experience while adding them to a quote. But what you're really looking for is a 
table where you list out all the combinations of carriers and token text and data and then for each combination specify a particular price and somehow have salesforce cpq map the attributes to those different values and pull the price and that is what our lookup query accomplishes so to do that let us see how we're going to start about setting it up the first thing we have to do is to create a custom object so we'll go to a setup and i've already created this for you this custom object is really a table which lists out all the attributes we want and the associated price for each combination so to be able to configure that the first thing we need to do is to have an object which will store all the fields for all that information so i've created this object called iphone cellular price and i've created fields which correspond to the different attributes so there's a field for carrier as you can see there's a field for data gb and a field for talk and text and each of these have the same pick list values as they are on the attribute listing for the quote line you'll also see that i've added another field called price so for each combination we will have a corresponding price and once you set up this object it's just a matter of loading the data in the table so let's quickly go and see what i've set up here so as you can see on that particular object i have a bunch of data loaded for each of the combinations so there's at and thousand minutes 10 gb priced at 100 us dollars similarly at and thousand minutes 2 gb at 70 dollars so as you can see it covers every combination and has a different price listed for each of them so you have a big listing there so this is a this is a table which we really want our price rule to go and check against to find the price an important thing to note here when we set this data up is of course that we should not repeat any combination so we don't want to have at and thousand minutes 10 gb hundred dollars and then a repeat of that row with at and thousand minutes 10 gb and say 110 dollars or even hundred dollars a repeat the reason is when the price rule is trying to do a map it might find multiple options and, and give out an error but this is your base data setup and what you now want is based on the selection the user does on the quote you actually want to fetch the correct price and populate it in the quote line so now we will go to the price rule which helps accomplish this so if i go back to my price rules i have the lookup price rule example in the header as as always i've given a price rule name lookup price rule let's quickly make this active so that it will fire the valuation scope is again set to calculator all conditions have to be met but the key difference here is what you see in the lookup object now this is where you want the price rule to know that i want to reference this particular custom object which i built and what you have to put here in this particular pick list value is the api name of the custom object you've created so now it knows that is the table i have to go and reference for all my mapping let's look at the price condition so we just have one price condition here and this is uh, very similar to what we had last time we are not making uh, many changes here because this is related lookup query um, before i show you this what we are looking for from a use case is we want to see if the cellular service has been added to the code so we're going to check what is the, whether this particular product is there and by that we're checking the quote lines product code and if you look at the particular product cellular service i've opened this in a different tab here you'll see that cellular service product has a product code of cs-2020 so that's our simple condition quote line product code equals a value of cs2020 so it's just going to check if i've added cellular service to run the price rule now the next thing we are going to do for a lookup query related price rule is scroll a little further down and look at another related list called lookup queries now this is where we are actually going to have the price rule evaluate conditions on the quote line and check it against this particular table here so essentially what we're trying to do is when a user is on the quote they're making selection on these attributes the selection of these attributes 
is what's going to be compared against the values in this table as part of the lookup query. So let's take the first example. And let me quickly go to edit mode to show you the values. So first thing is, it's going to look for a field value on the quote line. And the field it is checking is carrier. Now this is the attribute field which we have created on the quote line as part of setting up the attributes in, in the quote, uh, quote line and product options. And this particular value may not be available by default in this pick list field. So you will have to actually add the value. And again, you have to add the API name. So the, the key thing is the tested object and tested field is on the quote line level. And what you're testing against is set up in the lookup information. So you will be checking if it is equal to, so you'll choose the operator equal to the lookup field and the lookup field on this particular table is also carrier with, with this API name. So you want to again, add this particular API name in this pick list field to set up the price rule. So it's as simple as that. It's just checking for the quote line carrier is equal to the carrier in the lookup field. Again, we don't need to specify the object here. We're just specifying the field because when we set up the price rule at the price rule level itself, we've described what is the object. Uh, so if I go back here to the price rule header, you'll see we've, we've set up the object here. So in the lookup query, we don't need to reference the object in the field. We just need to reference what is the field API name. So in the same way we have set up two others to match both data and talk and text as well. And what that would do is it look across all the these three columns and find a match. So that's setting up the lookup query. Now the last thing it needs to do is once it finds a match, it needs to pull out the price information and that is achieved through our price action. And let's see how that is set up. So if I go back to edit mode to show you the values, so the target object is our quote line and what we are looking to update is the list price. So if the list price is not available, you can add the list price API name as I've shown here. And what we're looking against is the source lookup field. So here also, like we did when we are doing lookup queries, we have to update the API name of the field, which we are pulling the data from. So in this particular case, we are looking at the API name of the, the price field. So we just set that up and it will automatically pull what's on the price based on the matching values and update the list price. So that's in a sense how this overall uh, lookup price rule is, is set up. Now let's take a quick look at how this works. So now to see this action, let us go to our quote. We'll go to add a product. You're going to choose the iPhone 12 example and set the attributes. So let's quickly take a look at our table once more and uh, pick a value combination, which we want to test with. So let's say AT&T 1200 minutes and an unlimited data plan. If we choose these three attributes, what we expect is to get a list price of 135 USD. So going back to our code, which selecting AT&T, 1200 minutes and the data would be unlimited. Now let us save this. As you can see, it has added the cellular service and set the list price to 135 USD, exactly what we expected. Now let's uh, try this out with another example. So if I'm going to cancel out of this and quickly go back to my, um, my table to see another value, and uh, let's pick um, Sprint 500 minutes for 5 GB to give us $40. Okay. So I'm going to go back and add the product. And just to recap, we're looking at Sprint 500 minutes let's say 5 GB sprint 
40 US dollars exactly based on how this lookup query table has been set up. So as you can see with all this combination of data with all this variety of options we have, we just have a simple table to maintain. And by setting up the price rule correctly, we can very easily and very dynamically automate the pricing mechanism in Salesforce CPQ by using the price rule plus lookup query combination. So just to summarize what we did as part of lookup queries, we started by creating a custom object with fields that are representing the attributes and the associated price. We ensured that there's only one price for each combination of the attributes which we are uh, filtering on. And we updated pickless fields on, on a few objects to make sure we are referencing the current the correct API names. So I put a table here for your quick reference when you're setting up a price rule. But with all this combination, we are able to achieve a very robust and very powerful way of setting prices. And for that matter, any other field which we can update, it can not just be price, but other fields as well. It can be more than one field. So if you add multiple price actions, you will have multiple fields which you can update. So it's, it's one of the most powerful tools which you can use as part of Salesforce CPQ automation. So that's it for this session. We went through price rules, how to set them up and, and went through some of the complex scenarios to be handled by lookup queries. I really hope you found this session informative and useful. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Apex Ars, for giving us the opportunity to host this session.